recording. Should be good. Yes, sorry about that. Okay, back to it. Uh, public participation. The portion of the meeting is for items that are not on the agenda. The commission cannot act as presented during the public participation of the agenda. The commission is prohibited by the open meeting law from discussing or considering the item until the item is officially placed on the agenda. Please limit comments to five minutes. Do we have any public participation? Uh, is that it? What's in the chat? That's the transcription. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind those. I don't see anybody on the. If you do not, we do have Andrew, but I think he's probably preferring to be the guy. Very good. We'll move on to our discussion items. Our one and only item today is. Ponderosa Park. I think it's supposed to be Ponderosa Trails. It is Ponderosa Trails. Ponderosa Trails you. Park Basketball Court request. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You want to take it away? I do. Right. And on the screen with us is Andrew or Drew Gifford. He is a Ponderosa Trails uh, homeowner. And Andrew approached actually both Gino and myself, gosh, maybe in July, if I have that correct, Drew. We oh, first sorry. started. Uh, so Drew informed us that it was roughly a little bit over 700 single family residences just in Ponderosa Trails subdivision and a part of the CCRs and or HOA, you're not allowed to have a basketball hoop in your driveway and you are not allowed to have one attached to your house. Is that correct, Drew? Yeah, it even excludes um, backyards. We're not allowed to have basketball hoops anywhere on the property in, in my HOA. So, that, so Drew had the idea, he's like, let me reach out to City Parks and find out with Ponderosa Trails neighborhood park that exists there. And we'll go through, we've got maybe just like a five slide presentation here. Um, so reach out to us to find out like how do I go about getting a basketball court at the park since we're not allowed to have one in our neighborhood at all or anywhere on our property. And then Gina and I quickly took a look. We knew there's a half court at Bow and Arrow Park. That is a, another neighborhood park across Lake Mary Road. There's no safe way. And that's a regional transportation road. So not a safe way for anyone to cross the street and get over there. And it's a half court. So anyways, we got together with Drew, um, did a couple virtual meetings. And here's what we have to present. And Drew, interrupt me whenever you think appropriate. Um, especially if I start saying anything wrong. Here's a lovely picture of a court, obviously not in Arizona with those types of trees, but you get the idea. <laughs> okay. Oh, we could make something just as lovely. <laughs> Ponderosa Trails Park. So it's a neighborhood park by classification. The entire parcel is roughly 8.3, 8.53 acres in size. It includes a play structure, a large turf space that you see there, that rectangle, Picnic tables, a ramada for rent. The foot goes through this park. And there's a seasonable portable restroom. Um, the neighborhood park does serve a little bit over 700 single family residences that are right there in the subdivision. And like I just said, the nearest half court is across North Lake Mary Road at Bowman Arrow Neighborhood Park, and there's no safe way for kids to cross. Um, I looked it up today in the engineering classifications. North Lake Mary Road is considered a regional travel roadway classification. So it wouldn't even be ideal for us to go to traffic engineering and talk to them about some type of crossing there. Um, a typical outdoor basketball court has a dimension of roughly about 100 feet by 50 feet for a full size court. Uh, in this location, we can, it, it can be more of our discussion. So keep this bullet point in your head. We could do like a low fence, like four feet, no fence at all, um, as there's not a near roadway to where, uh, in speaking with Drew, where we would propose to put this. We would need to consider accessibility of the existing foots and or walkway that's around this turf area based on our suggestion. An estimated cost for a typical basketball court is about $100,000. 
that could include some of that site work too that we just don't quite know yet until you have a design. Um, you'd be amazed at how big that turf space is, and then that's an approximate size. That's even a little bit bigger than 100 foot by 50 foot. Just to give an idea, and spatially, this is where it would go. I'll use my mouse, and hopefully, it does show up for the virtual world. It does. This area right here has got some pretty nasty slope, so not ideal to put a port. That's all true. It is, and it is all um, in the flood plain. And we did speak with stormwater in, I want to say it was October, Gino and I approached stormwater and a, something like a, a concrete port. They're okay with that going in an area like this. This is where we have roughly in here our most ideal location to put something flat and figure out what the connection looks like from the turf space and or foot as far as accessibility and a walkway to get down to it. Um, again, so I wouldn't be an advocate for putting a fence up around something that water it and or debris is meant to go through. So it's also, I think, a great candidate to just be an open basketball court. That keeps it a little bit more open to the folks wanting to play. This core would not have lighting. There is not lighting at this park at all. Um, I haven't even read through the HOA CCNRs and H, um, HOA docs, but there's no other lighting, so I wouldn't suggest that here either. That's our proposed location. Again, we vetted it with our stormwater friends. And so now we can kind of just open it up for, I think, a casual conversation. And Drew's available if you have any questions being a resident in that area. Was there consideration of putting it potentially up where it's more forested currently by the playground? Let me pull up a different map. I'm going to quit sharing for a second. There are some additional areas to the neighborhood park. I don't think that's ideal or to honestly to blaze through some trees in the neighbor's, um, neighbor's I park. I keep it out of the drainage because the problem you run into when you put them down in the drainage, you have to do quite a bit more um, structural work to maintain the integrity of the port. But to put that cost probably twice what you're talking about. Possible, we could still do like a six inch thick post tension slab, floating slab. You would still need to do about a get three, footers three, foot, down. three foot turn down. We or haven't actually. seen significant flooding in there, but no, I appreciate the um, because we do want to think of all what ifs. Uh, what, is the, what is the giant rectangle? That's a turf space where Tyrone, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't necessarily have any programmed soccer play there. Or do we? No, we don't. We okay. don't uh, allocate that field to organized youth groups, but a lot of um, the residents and teams still utilize it, but we just allocate it. So you would need a full court basketball and move something more of like the, we proposed at Pockrit, uh, the West Side Park, uh, like more of a circular one where it's got one main post with four. Group sign, so you get four half courts or four keys essentially. Drew, can you hear that? Uh, it's a little, it's a little spotty, but I think I'm picking up most of it at least. So one of the thoughts was instead of just doing, say, a hundred foot by fifty foot rectangle, we have looked at a proposal where there is a court that's almost a cir a circle with the posts and hoops in the middle, so it kind of creates like four half courts, right? Yeah. Would the footprint of that be about the same? What, what kind of footprint would that circle have on it? Um, it's, it's just outside the key, so it's, you know, a three or three point line. So you go about four or five feet outside of that. OK. Create, you create four, essentially four uh, key size uh, courts so you can shoot around the side or play three on three. So. Jeff yeah, I, mean, I think that I think that either would be serviceable to the neighborhood. I think either of them could be would be used. Um, so if, if the committee feels like one is more doable, then then we could do with, of course, do that. Um, something else, Amy and I had briefly mentioned is depending on what lines you put on it, we can make it more multi-purpose as well. So. Um, if we drew pickleball lines on there or anything, it could have a broader appeal to people who don't play basketball. Um, so I don't know if that would affect that 
approach oh, either, or if that's even something that that we want to pursue. Yeah, you will have pickleball with the new apartment complex going there. That's part of the agreements with the city council to approve that. It is, yeah, uh, but yeah, so we could make it multi-purpose if it was a rectangle, I suppose. It's true, might as well. Right. The last question uh, in my mind, is it possible if you were to put it on the south side of the field, could you tuck it right up against the field mm -hmm. and then and then bring it up to that level of the field and kind of and they allow us to encroach into the uh, on the field the dra well the drainage area. Yes. Drainage is completely fine if we put product in there. Stormwater. I'm talking about fine. bringing it up to the level of the field and then right. smoking. Don't believe we're allowed to bring that base level up. Yeah, that it's elevation. Be removing um, the volume, so you'd have to add the volume back to someone else. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so to answer your first question, Commissioner Parsons, we didn't take a look at over over here is where the playground and Ramada is. If everyone could follow my uh, mouse, the contours get pretty steep there, plus the tree removal. So we did not look there at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, we definitely have a flatter area in this storm drain area, which is then where um, Gino and I went to next. And that's why we went out to Stormwater just to get their take on this before we moved any further on any consideration of it. Um, yeah, again, uh, I misspoke a little bit because up here in this round bowl, it's fairly flat, but it's really steep coming off the curb. And there is an outlet structure there, which is why, again, we moved down into here. I think our biggest concern, outside of any concerns to make this work, being in a, a floodplain would be what does this access look like peeling down here off the foots trail and or off the um, turf area so we do need to ensure that it's accessible yep. yeah and the area to the east of the of the turf gets used a lot for sledding um so i, I think it'd be a good idea to leave that alone as well because I, I don't that seems a little more dangerous to have snow covered concrete <laughs> <laughs> Where, and I wouldn't want to mess with all the sledding the kids get to do, because that's a really popular place and a lot of fun for, for a lot of people in the neighborhood as well over there. I, mean, not, I, was, I think you're, I mean, you've considered all the other cases. I don't really see how you could put it anywhere else. I just did some quick math on that circle thing. That seems like a lot more concrete. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I just did some pi r squared. It's, it's quite a bit more. So. Okay. But you also get four hoops. Out hoops of that. and a bat versus so, two. What, what is the, is the community really craving a full court experience, or are they, would four and a half courts be better served? Or the one full court use it with multiple teams for? Right. Yeah, use the circle. What do you think on that, Druid? What do you think the community prefer? Um, I mean, I can just speak to my experience growing up playing basketball. Pickup games aren't are rarely full court, um, but you know, a, a full court has two half courts, and it gives you the option to play full court if you have a good turnout. Um, so most parks I have experience with have just the full court. Um, and if it's less concrete, which would make sense that two half courts would have less concrete than two than four half courts, it makes sense to me to just kind of keep it that way. Uh, I don't think that, like I mentioned before, I don't think that one would have a strong preference over the other. I mean, you could always have two or both at mid court on the other side. True. Yeah. Shoot hoops with. Yeah. yeah. True. You know, like when you have like. Say with the uh, high school course, indoor and stuff like that. You have your main course, so they added two baskets, but then you can go sideways and just take a couple more baskets if you have more yeah. opportunities. Yeah, so, I think that'd be great. That'd be a really good way to do it to to really optimize the space and make sure we could have more than one game going at a time if they wanted to as well. 
I, I like the, the rectangle idea with the two that you guys just described. I think that makes it effective. So. Right. You know, obviously, and, and, and Drew knows this, we know that we don't have funding identified for this, 100,000 up to whatever this could be. And this wasn't an item I explained to Drew that wasn't on your list when the commission was prioritizing uh, a list of gosh 26 or so items uh it was just it was in its infant stage when we were going through that so you know a question that i have to ask the commission is with this information is this anything you would insert even in our top five or say five through whatever out of that giant priority list that we have i'd love to hear from more residents on reverse insurance i mean i i grew up with also on his side, but um, but I, I, is that a community that is craving a basketball court? I mean, maybe that would help us maybe drive a decision to maybe move it up in priority. So, and I don't know what that looks like in terms of how do you show us the consent of residents for a basketball court, but that would make our decision a lot easier. There are a lot of kids. Oh yeah, there's I, know, I know there's lots of kids, but is there a lot of kids that want to see basketball? My guess is with an advocate like Drew in the neighborhood and with him bringing this forward, um, I believe you have access to the HOA board meetings, correct? Yeah, and there's one later this month. So, I mean, that could be our outlet to try to find out that survey data instead of the city, say, doing a survey of Ponderosa Trails residents. Um, both will work on their part, helping us understand. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that's a really decent forum to get. Like I said, I don't know what, what the city would have in, in terms of like, how would you show that? But even like a signature thing, if you got 500 signatures from 500 Ponderosa Park residents, you know, now all of a sudden we're like, oh, well, they do want this. So that does. Are we going to be doing a reset of the priorities next summer? We did it this summer, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Five minutes. Ten. Often or not often, as you all want to. I think um, we do need a little bit of stability in it so that we can actually budget things because some of the items on there, if you recall, we're having to build up funds to like over time. Um, Cheshire Park expansion comes to mind as well as Continental, which is the big one. Um, but I mean, Amy, do you have any sort of idea of cost estimate for this? You know, a typical basketball court is a hundred thousand. Um, I think that if we we can start to do a little what while Drew does a little due diligence with the with the neighborhood through the HOA, we could start to do due diligence on the park side on finding out with stormwater, like what will the true requirements be of a slab in this area and based on the flows that they see in this area of stormwater occurrence. Um from a maintenance lens, it's not very high, but we're not out there every single moment it rains either at this location. So we could certainly do a little bit more on that. Um, we've taken a look at it and I do think it's feasible as far as gaining that accessibility down to the court, whether it's off the turf space or off the urban trail and into there. So we feel pretty confident on that. Well, is there anything that the HOA can do to, uh, I, I don't know, Think about HOA things, but can the HOA partner with the city? Is that like a possibility, or are we not allowed to do that? Are they not allowed to do that? We are tucking donations anytime. <laughs> that <anything. laughs> I believe they can do whatever and with however much they would like. I so, mean, I, but how much do they have? Right. And I think that would be kind of a another way to say to the city, "Okay, we really want this." Here's thirty thousand dollars or something, you know, I'm just making up a number, but you know, that would take off thirty percent of the cost or the estimate cost. So I think that's a great 
way of going through it, seeing what is the demand, what, how much does the HOA want it, and would they be willing to share with it the cost? I think that's a great thinking. I have a slight hesitation of all the stuff we did with the priority list to like shoot this right. to the top mm -hmm. because I, there's so many things that have been waiting for so long. Um, and it feels like when we get a, whenever we get a new thing, it's always like, oh, we should put it up to the top and then we keep doing that. Well, I, I guess I guess what would make me feel more like it could shift priority, it's like when you go to the grocery store and uh, ragu is on sale, I buy some ragu. So if there's a little bit of discount with Penny to throw in some funds via the HOA, I thought you had a very good idea on how to shift that priority to level higher. Yeah, so. I, that's why I'm like, we don't get any of that, then that makes me hesitant versus if HOA's well you have a partner. I agree. The other example is um, you guys have been talking about the outdoor rental track, the community track, and if they are able to bring funding to the table to help us with that project, it might behoove us. <laughs> To follow that timing and get it done. Uh, that happens, that location happens to be another priority that's already at the top of the list. But um, yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, Drew, do you have any thoughts or comments about the HOA and their involvement? Um. I, I don't know what what their willingness would be. They're who I first approached about it, not before I realized this was a city park. So I talked to the HOA manager just briefly, and she just referred me there. Um, and I've been talking to them about trying to find out why they have rules against basketball hoops and what it would take to change it. And it, she doesn't seem to think that it's something that can change, but that's not because basketball hoops are bad or not wanted, but because the HOA rules are such that it's just really hard to pass new resolutions. Um, so that being said, I can touch base with them and present this as an alternative and see if it, this is an and or an or or something that would give the HOA board uh, something else to do, something else to try for that appetite of bas in basketball hoops. Um, but as far as financial, I. I can't speak to that really. It may be beneficial, Drew, um, when you're approaching them. If you have maybe like um, if you have anyone that is interested in it, like yourself, if there's a, if you have a, you are able to draft up a list of residents with their signature saying we would like this, and maybe when if you approach them with that list, they may be a little bit more workable. That's helpful. Thank you. So yeah, I think the uh, HOA meeting is the next HOA meeting, I believe, second half of next week. Um, and so I could talk to them. I could, I could try to get some time on that agenda to talk to them about what that appetite would be from the board, at least. Anything from our virtual uh, commissioners? Hello. Um, so I live in Ponderosa Trails and I'm actually on the HOA. I think it's a really great idea. I honestly don't know how it will go over. Like I can bring it up to them too, because I think it's a good idea. And yeah, we've tried to change so many things in the CCNRs, but it's near impossible because no one will even respond half the time. We need like two thirds of people to respond and that never even happens, but I think it's a really good idea. So I think the petition would be really helpful to present to the meeting, which is on the 19th. It's like perspective. So Looks like Dana, thank you for that support. Do you know enough about 
how that would look if, if the HOA would be able to be financially helpful or is that something that would be passed on to the residents or, or how that would even work? Um, if anything, like there might be an amount that the HOA, if it goes over well, would be able to contribute. Um, it would just have to go through like looking at all the financials and like expected expenses and then what we need in reserves. And then there might be a portion that would have to go to the homeowners. And if it does come to that, that's something that we would need people like vote on and see if enough people would contribute or even respond. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think it's all really good questions that it, we can definitely bring up at the meeting. So I know I'm, I'm like one of the newer people on the board, so we haven't really had anything like this come to us while I've been there, but I know like the president and the secretary, they've all been around like for many, many years. So they probably know how it looks a little bit better. Great. And from a city perspective, is there a dollar amount that to you guys demonstrates priority and want more than something else? I think anything helps. 50%. 50 <laughs> percent of 10%? Well. <laughs> I want a TV show with Bill Murray. <laughs> we don't know okay that's fair that's a that's a great answer i just i just wanted to ask the question in case i get asked at the board meeting well so we'll start at 50 and then we'll go from there i mean i think that's that's the position of this board right now so i'm okay. just kidding but i i, I don't i think it'd be hard to hard to put a number on it i would say i would say anything that they can help with is is appreciated given that our priorities are pretty full at this point. We don't have a lot of funds to spare to do this. So I don't think there's any way this could probably occur in the next year or ten in the in the slightest. So and maybe if you ask for enough money from the HOA, maybe they'll figure out a way to change those CC and R so you can have a basketball hoop. That's what <laughs> that's a position I'm gonna take. Hey, fifty thousand dollars or two thirds. There just, you go. Yeah. Any other questions for Drew on this item? I do just want to clarify for the record that even if the HOA contributed funds to build it, the city would still maintain it. Um, in Ponderosa Trails, we actually have some things that are HOA maintained and some things that our city maintains, so I just want to be that the city would maintain us. Yes. Unless they would like it. I think we need to be clear on city property, the city would maintain us. Yeah. All right, if no further questions for Drew. Thank you for coming thank to you. us. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Of course, thank you all for taking the time to talk through it with me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll back up on our does anyone else have anything to comment on that before we move on? We haven't heard from Commissioner Layton. Do you have anything to add, Commissioner? No comments from me. Thank you. Well, with that, I guess we'll move on uh, to see Council Liaison. Do we have uh, our new Council Member? Looks like she still has not been able to join us. All right, then. Without further ado, then we'll on to monthly reports, monthly highlights of parks and recreation, open space, and events. Do we have any? So we don't have because we're meeting so early in the month. Um, yeah. We don't have our January report done. When we do have that done, we'll email that out to you so did you have it and um, the same thing will happen in february as well since we're meeting early so in february you can talk about jane <laughs> <laughs> i was i was like i didn't see that <laughs> yeah we, we scheduled our reports to to work on 
most of the time they'll be in time for the commission meeting, but it can be early. It's not going to happen. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Well, it's moving along fast. Information items to and from commissioners and staff. I don't have other than to say that the library construction is broken. <laughs> <laughs> We're aware. <laughs> Amy, did you want to report out on any of the December events? Yeah, yes, I would like to. I would. Um, and I know that, you know, events is the, it's the E on the end, but mm -hmm. there are a handful of signature events in the month of December that our events and marketing team do put on. One of them is Winter Wonderland. That was, if my memory serves correctly, December 3rd, I believe. Huge, I think our largest attendance yet to date on that, or I want to say the Rebecca will correct me where I'm wrong, but weren't the numbers around 10,000 people? It's pretty wild. We are Arizona, this Winter Wonderland. Go ahead. What is that? <laughs> Winter Wonderland oh, is um, where there's some events going on at Heritage Square. Uh, Santa Claus rides in on a fire truck with a couple of elected officials that can join, and Santa turns on the proverbial lights on the holiday tree that's located in the square. That is that different than the parade? Yes. So the parade oh. then is was the following weekend on the yeah. 10th, of which our events and marketing team processes the permit for that and works on the road closure on that. That is put on by the Chamber of um, Commerce, mm -hmm. the Chamber folks, and the holiday light parade. So that occurs then on the 10th, and then on New Year's Eve is the infamous pine cone drop, <laughs> um, which throughout that day, our partners with the Downtown Business Alliance had no New Year's Eve, which they programmed that. That had, we think from photos that we saw, easily 4,000 people, which was not anticipated whatsoever. <laughs> It's, it's great, but it shows that we need to start doing some other things there. Then there's the pine cone drop at 10 p.m. and at midnight. So again, our events and marketing team work on that road closure and with our partners with police, fire, um, solid waste to ensure that we've got refuse and recycle cans down there, as well as uh, public works with street sweeping afterwards. That one was also incredibly well attended. I don't know if we have exact numbers on that for a 10 p.m. and midnight drop, but it sounds like it was pretty lively. <laughs> I could hear it from my house. Yep. My house is five blocks away. So yes, was, yeah, and there's fireworks involved with it, which are also put on by the city and, and uh, our events and marketing team process that permit. There was one rogue firework operator who then came up the street and was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so they got, I got every three. single one of those, actually. <laughs> yep, I do. Um, but yes, yeah, incredible. December's really busy for that group, and they did an amazing job at, uh, especially even though the pandemic's not over, but I guess COVID endemic, and in getting um, getting the word out. And they work pretty heavily with our Discover Flag staff team and getting the marketing word out too. And obviously, and then as mentioned before, with the partner with the Downtown Business Alliance. So yeah, some pretty impactful events that hit our downtown businesses. Um, good stuff. Yeah, it took a little breather, I think, in the first week of January. <laughs> <It's not that. laughs> and we'll start doing their permit season for this upcoming event season outdoors. Going through the traffic, there were a lot of people. So. You could tell, right? You could feel it. I um, have never, I haven't seen an element like that. I don't even know how long. That was borderline miserable. Well, <laughs> Fort Valley Road is backed up all the way to Miami. Well, I saw Fort Valley the other day all the way to Schweitzer. Yeah. I, and, I, and I wondered what they were giving away at Snow. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's wild. How were the snow plow operations? Snow plow operations went well. I think we're maybe finally recovering with sleep from that. <laughs> Um, it's supposed to start again. Yes, there may be one to two inches tomorrow night. I haven't looked lately, and there may be a storm coming in this weekend. We did really well considering that we are short staffed in parks. Uh, I do want to acknowledge there are a handful of people that do come out and help. All the rec centers help out outside the rec centers and in partners on this. 
park flag assist us uh, down at the square with getting the snow off the gazebos, which that's huge. Um, some of the clean team that work, uh, volunteer their hours with the Downtown Business Alliance can help every now and then. It is quite the operation if you've ever seen it. Um, we're becoming, I think, even more effective with all of our tools and devices on making it happen. It's a lot of assignments that are scattered throughout everywhere. We tend to go, um, not really triage mode, but we have it prioritized. We know what our first priorities are, and then we can move on to more of a medium. And so we have that high, medium, and low priority. We also do perform the courtesy berm removal program for, gosh, I think that group is well over 100 now. Yeah, I think we're over 180. Yeah. And so that we, we communicate with streets, ensure that streets is clear the second book if they would consider secondary roads or residential roads, then we can come in and hit that burn at the end of an individual's driveway on that list. Are you guys um are you guys getting any staffing you need for that for a snow removal? No, it's just park staff. So we don't uh, streets public works will go out and seek uh seasonal operators. Yeah. We in parks do not do that. Um, we still have, we may have two of our five vacancies filled. We're waiting to hear how that's going across all digits and keep them across till Gene or myself tell you otherwise. But we would still have three other vacancies in the parks maintenance worker role to fill. And we normally would have at least six seasonal um, temporary staff, and we have kind of 1.5 right now. So it's still a struggle. But we're getting it done. So you get a new tractor on the way potentially? We have a new tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw that on the council. We do. So that's a replacement of one of our tractors. I think that one was from 2007. No. You remember Gino? I'm putting Gino on the spot. No, right, um, it was 2008. Was it 2008? Yeah. Um, that was a part of one time funds that fleet department was provided. And through that was identified um, a we've done so far a toolcat, which we were approved for that from city council on November 2nd, and that is on order. And this tractor replacement, and then we have an electric vehicle truck on the way to one of them's already was in our fleet capital. Yeah. But yeah, we had one time funds that were provided and fleet department identified those needs for us, which is great because we do need a new tractor. Um, I have a friend's update. Go for it. Um, so we do our annual Friends of Copino County thing Wednesday of this week. Um, Aaron and I, Aaron is the president of that friends organization. Um, I, we recently lost our uh, Gina Salas. We recently lost Regina from this. Um, I'm going to be, once I talk to Aaron a little bit more about uh, possibly, and I haven't talked to Rebecca about this at all, but this is kind of Aaron and I spitballing. Uh, one of the big challenges with friends in any capacity uh, is getting participation, not only on board seats, but on people just to come and do things with the friends, be participatory with the friends. And so it was thought that if we started to join forces, maybe it would create two friends, help one friends group and create a second friends group that would kind of collaborate a little bit. Um, definitely be two separate entities, but possibly get some interest in both uh, one or if not both of, of the organizations. So uh, I also have been unbelievably busy the last three months and have not had a chance to dig into anything like that, partly because I didn't know if Regina was going to be coming back or not. So, um, but I still do want to reach out to Regina because she is a pretty, she started the friends group of Coconino County Parks. So I still want to keep her in the loop. Um, I don't know if she's interested, but I thought I'd give her a rest after the election cycle. She was pretty stressed when I talked to her in Fry's the day before the election. So I was like, I could beat you on G. <laughs> and uh, so I was going to reach out to her this month after I talked to Aaron. And so just a quick update. I haven't forgotten about it. I just, 
I have no time and I didn't want to bother you with any questions. So. Uh, just speaking of elections, with, I know we have a new council member. Does a new city council mean anything for us or do we just keep doing what we do? Um, no changes to the commission or the commission structure or numbers. So um, we are fully not on my head. We are fully um, appointed right now. We have seven members appointed and you're all very active, which I appreciate. And um, the only thing I can see is that council priorities start to change, but that won't happen right away. Okay. I think the um, Arizona Daily Sun, they put out their priorities. And it seems to be similar to what it was before. So we'll see. And I mean, as a council, they'll review their priorities after it takes, like getting us prepared for the budget cycle that we are working on right now, which is fiscal year 23-24. But then later in this year, they may establish new priorities for the following fiscal year. I see. So it'd be like two years after this. Right. Okay. So we're not in any immediate shift. Okay. Not really. Other than having a new liaison. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Okay, anything else on your information items? Anybody? Hang in there. Need another year. When we need to talk about what we're going to have on our agenda for February 15th. Please remember that meeting in February is on the second week instead of the third again. I, so Amy won't be here. I hope, hope that we can have some budget updates for you by then. Um, like maybe a glimpse at our brand new five-year plan that mm -hmm. we've been trying to work on. And do you think Amy, we might have that by then? I think we could. Definitely our operating capital. And recreation sections. Yeah, so as long as do you know when Tyrone be here? Maybe they can be out to see and I'm ready to present on some of that stuff, and I can fill in, of course, because I need to. Um, so, yeah, we can provide whatever budget updates we have. That's we've been a little bit behind. We should also know by then what our requests are of budget team. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and it's it's going to again just as a, a clue, it would be just our typical that we need to request each year. Nothing out of the ordinary. We can go over, yeah. Personnel request. Okay. Other that too. Yeah, I can do that. Anything you're planning for in the spring as far as like playground replacement or anything like that that we should be able to do? The spring could be rather busy for uh Parks. Um, we've got the Fort Park restroom to deliver. We're working on that with the uh, concrete slab resembles, and then we'll get that through both state and local building department for permitting. We have the pickleball courts to deliver at Bushmaster Park. Um, I would like to still focus some efforts on getting access to what would be future Westside Park. We still have the access. Um, conversation to occur with that HOA. So it's, we'd love to get that done and then carry forward that project to next year because we just don't have the capacity to deliver that. Play structures, you know, we're still waiting on stormwater with the open channel that comes off Arroyo Seco down to Killa that impacts Ponderosa Park. One is, once that is complete, we're ready to build that park back. Um, I don't think that'll happen this spring or summer. Though, unfortunately, but that could be something that occurs in the fall and then carries through maybe to the following spring. But that brought it up, so maybe next, uh, just an update on all these projects. I think we could. We would definitely have an update by the 13th on, I think, both when the uh, pickleball courts would be going to city council and a status update on the Thorpe Park restroom. 
so that part that you just mentioned that won't get done in this year, that's the one that's next to California. It is, yeah. yes. What is it called? Plunder Park. We just want to continue. It's so confusing. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 There's one type of a drainage. Confusing to me. Sorry. Put together the agenda with this. Yeah, we should bring the hand. There you go. Yeah, 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 on the recreation side, there's at, at our rec centers a couple of capital items to deliver. They're smaller in nature, but it doesn't mean they're less important. We have a new piece of equipment coming at JOC Montoya. We have a new piece of equipment at Hal Jensen. We have a new uh, air hockey table, I believe it was, at Hal Jensen. We still um, we still need to deliver here at the Aquaplex um, carpeting in, in the administrative offices. Um, working on some remodels there. Concrete. It's not just concrete. It's not just concrete. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Um, put this on the agenda, and as long as since Amy won't be here, as long as we are here and comfortable with those. Updates, we can get that on. Otherwise, we might wait till March. Yes, I think those babies. Get baby. Where is Amy going? <laughs> she joined with Tesla. Is she going to Mars? It's <laughs> <laughs> vacation. Oh, okay. Could I, could I throw something out for uh, to look at at some point? Maybe not next month, unfortunately. I start classes. Uh, so I won't be here. Uh, but my, it's a research class, so there's some days that I'll be able to actually go. So uh, uh, friend of mine who comes to the Aquaplex frequently was saying that she was coming through, and a homeless person had, had walked up and asked to take a shower, and was then asked to pay five dollars. He didn't have the money. My friend ended up paying for it because he needed that. He, yeah. So all that to say, is there a way that we could maybe talk about what that five dollar fee is? Why we have it? If there's a way that we can do something to set up for free community shower access for people who need it. I'm not familiar. It was just brought to my attention, and she was like, "You're on the Parks and Rec Commission." Okay. Uh, so we, here I am we doing could it. make this very specific, or we could make it broader. We could review all of our fees, which honestly, with the number of new commissioners that we have, is probably not a bad idea. Um, and our Aquaplex membership fees are council set, just like all of our other recreation um, and rental fees. Um, so that's one of many, many fees that we have that are set by council, but we can certainly go over the policies and, yep. and everything related to that. Um, if you would like to talk with us about that specific fee more individually, happy to do that. Yeah, I, I think too, just, I mean, you could like, nice people could come shower if they needed that. It's like, just a community. Anything. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's a much bigger conversation. But she brought it to my attention, and I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll mention it to the commission. To see. There's one other thing you might be able to respond back to that individual. I don't know the status of it, but we did write a letter of support for this in mid October. There was a group going for a neighborhood sustainability grant application. Where their idea, I don't know again the status of their application, um, was to manage an Aquaplex Day Pass user voucher program for that exact example. But I don't know if they were awarded the grant or not. I haven't heard an update. Okay, cool. That's good. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll put on either the March or April agenda okay. to review of our fees. I think we all need to get up to speed on that. And have we heard have any of those raised? I haven't been able to do it since I've been here. I've talked about every year. The last time I took them to City Council for their consideration, 
um, they were not interested in changing anything. And, uh, I would say now is a great time for we have this thing going on right now called inflation. It's a um, pretty hot well, topic. That, that is where off agenda now, so I'm a little bit careful, but um, the council's ideas when they did not want to discuss them previously is that they didn't want to raise any of our costs to uh, she should just go ahead and adjourn and we can have these discussions afterwards. Um, we can't not, because we have quorum in the room. That's true. We cannot connect, conduct city business without that it being an open. But well, we anyways. certainly will establish that on a future agenda. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else has anything else to add. Commissioners online, do you have anything else to add? Robin or looks like we no, that's not an end. Well, no one else has anything, then we're at the end of our agenda and go ahead and adjourn for tonight. That is the shortest meeting I've ever had. And you were here in person. I am in here in person. This is still the shortest meeting I should have ever attended. <laughs> we knew we knew you were coming first, and we're like, we're going to the George Store. It's under an hour. <laughs> you would love me to see you all. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah, we keep coming in person. Oh, sorry, I've got a question for you. Please come here. Is that for carpet in your administrative office? Yeah. Exactly. Is that carpet in your administrative office?